Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach, and let's check in how we're doing on the Jawbreakers God King Indiegogo. Why am I, why am I refreshing this thing? I just, I just opened it up. So we're at ninety-one thousand seven hundred fifty-two, which is really exciting. Uh, not even at one week yet. Uh, one week is going to be tomorrow at noon. So at one hundred thousand, we're going to unlock a uh, Ethan Van Skyver cover. He did the cover for Lost Souls. Then he'll do the cover for um. What do you call it for God King and it'll be for all the versions of the book because there's only one version of the book so everyone's on the you know level playing field uh, but uh, very very uh, pre <coughs> appreciative of it there's a new uh, signed it's a, it's a premium one people ask for a premium I have dozens of emails and and DMS and comments are like put up a premium people want to give you more money so okay so there you go. There's a premium one. And people already do it. So thank you very much. So uh, one of the things I'd like to do is I like to listen to the fans. And so, oh, I got, let me get out my phone so I can see this right here. So uh, Steve Worster said, thanks for all the great videos, Zach. You might like Star Wars issue 89 by Anne Ascenti and Brett Blevin. So this immediately made my, you know, an antenna go up because... I did not know that Anne Vicente had ever written any Star Wars, um, and I'm a big fan of Brett Blevins, um, so I was just on it. Um, and then I read this, and this this story is absolutely fantastic. So let me go over to the show the whole page at a one time thing. How do boomer such a boomer? So anyway, let's go to Anne Vicente because I talked about her. Well. Hundreds of times, <laughs> but I never get tired of it. So Anna Senti is a woman who came in and she worked her way slowly over multiple years into editing, then became an editor of X-Men, then became the group editor um, and, you know, made it into a franchise, not just one book, but a franchise. But she also had an abiding interest in writing. And that's what I mainly think of her as, as a writer. And we see that she <laughs> just made her way up. I mean, start to running in writing in 1981 and then just years and years and years two years before she got a series um and it was just it was like a downslope you know it was like the last couple issues of a not very popular uh character and then just grabbing whatever she can just a lot of these are, are editing credits not writing credits but um then she didn't ever really get her like big shot which was long shot, no pun intended, until four years of writing. So one of the things I just keep thinking about Anna Senti is how effed up it is. Ooh, we're almost cursing. Effed up. <laughs> how effed up it is that the current frauds, the charlatans, the bullies, the villains running and ruining the comic book industry have basically hidden her have uh, ignored her existence along with Louise Simonson, Joe Duffy to prop themselves. Uh, absolute frauds, complete frauds, like Max Visaggio, Heather Antos, Gabby Rivera, what's her name? She calls herself bisexual lighting and murder over at Oni. Absolute frauds have hidden legends because it doesn't work with their dominant myth. Their dominant myth is it was nothing but a white cis male club until like 2014 until, you know, they stormed the gates like Area 51. No, 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 no. Way, way back, like Jimmy Carter days, women were editors and writers at Marvel Comics. And before then, they had important, you know, production uh, positions at the company. So this story is just fan freaking tastic. And it reminds me, and this is like, geez, what was this, like 1983, 84? Star Wars. So I, I didn't even know that Anna Senti uh, edited Star Wars for a while. So this was number 89, and it was from 1984. Wow. November of 1984. So three years before she got her big deal series, which was six years into her career. Um, and uh, she's writing, and she, you can tell she's still growing. Like, you see a page like this, and that is just... Just way too much text for an opening page. And honestly, the art is not very good. The art, is, the art kind of fluctuates wildly. 
Um, it almost looks like it might have. Well, it's. I think it's got that young artist thing where they get nervous and they. Oh, now I'm gonna ink like Alfredo Alcala. Oh, now I'm gonna ink like myself. Um, but uh, this, I used to read. You know, I've read Anna Senti since I got into comics, and she had a really big uh, influence on uh, not just my life but my personality and everything because there's this common theme to her stories is. Uh, Few people are all good. No, no one's all good. Very few people are all bad. And there's this constant um, searching. You know, uh, people are, she writes these kind of philosopher heroes. And they're trying to figure out light, uh, life and, and deal with, you know, uh, uh, ideals versus reality. So this is what this is. This is after, you know, Return of the Jedi. This is after they won. And... It, Luke is going out and he's helping with these rebellions. And they're getting very caught up into, you know, the spirit of rebellion. But it's this dark victory. There's This whole story is about, basically, I would guess that, you know, Anna Sendi, probably in her mind and her heart, is like a socialist or communist. But she's also an intellectual. So she's read history. And she's seen time and time and time again how these, uh, you know, the, the revolutionaries become the new despot. So this... You're you're coming into this revolution on this planet right as they, you know, go up the steps and they, they're, they're mocking the former king. And uh, it's it goes dark very, very fast. Their leader, uh, Ragold, is shot. He says, you know, there's a traitor in our midst. So they start, you know, kind of trying to find the traitor. Now, the obvious one is I thought it was going to be the pretty girl was a traitor, but that's not it. Uh, one of the things I also like about... Um, and Ascenti is she was very, uh, she wrote very vibrantly. In fact, it might seem, if you read it, it might seem a little bit uh, too strong, uh, almost like on the nose. Uh, so they're talking and they're kind of celebrating. And this, you know, this uh, beautiful woman, she says, uh, this is just the beginning. Imagine to, to be free to do and think whatever we wish. We'll revive the arts. And then Luke says, but the people will need help. They don't know what freedom is. She says, true, to ones enslaved so long will they know what to do with freedom. I guess it isn't so easy to be free. And Luke says, we toppled another figurehead. So what? It's not enough to be against something. One must be for something. So one, you know, on one hand, you could definitely look at say, is like, ooh, is this a little amateurish? It seems like it's a little on, on the nose. I would actually say that, you know, there's, there's conceits. Um, to every uh, story or writer's work. And one of Anna Senti's conceits is people are very sincere. Even if they're villains and see themselves as villains, they're very sincere in their villainy. Like, th they'll express it. Um, so it's, it's almost like this magical realism uh, way of talking. So uh, Luke is having a lot of, you know, uh, he's, 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 I don't know, entranced by this woman i thought she was going to have some sort of actual entrancing power she's just a pretty woman <laughs> you know it's, he's a young guy um so but things are just you know kind of collapsing uh way too fast he's even just kind of like you know he's he's really into her so he's just like can we get some hours she's like yeah i'm gonna get a ship you know they're not gonna go sit in the field like padme and anakin did with those little weird fat cows you know they're they're, they're gonna hook up that's the deal um and then uh the empire comes back because this is spoiler and this is a fantastic story um it, it's it's a really sad tragic story where everyone just kind of bets on nothing's gonna work so the rebels were actually uh um the rebels on this planet were funded by the empire to give them an excuse to come in and you know uh, get rid of the uh, the former king uh, and then everyone, this is the part that I like that was just kind of tracked. So she gets, uh, um, she gets uh, uh, killed. And then uh, <laughs> this kid, one of the things about comic book, uh, <coughs> especially <coughs> Western artists, is man alive, they are bad at, at drawing kids. I, I didn't know whether this kid was uh, a boy or a girl. Um, they it looks like a girl, but they seem to be referring to the character as a boy. And um, then they get to this weird thing where everyone just knows it's the end. So they're just trying to, like, have fun. And, in fact, a bunch of people keep saying, like, i got to skip a couple pages. Um, 
go back to browse pages. Okay, so I'll skip to the end. So then at the end, they, uh, they find a guy who knows the secret. And he's basically, I need to get off world. What does he say? Um, he says, uh, now the price. My obsession with knowing all has made my brain a time bomb. I've gone too far. The Empire wants me dead. I need a man, a daring soul with unlimited guts to get me to get my useless bones the heck off world. So then, even though he wants off world, he does this kind of like challenge thing, like, I want to see if you're the real deal. And he puts his food in a decanter with a scorpion. Look at this guy, he's so freaking gnarly. Uh, but this is, you know, uh, uh, Skywalker's a young buck. It's all about proving himself to everyone and himself. So he's like, I'm gonna get it. And then he's like a badass. He's like, mind if I don't eat this one? Um, and uh, so then they find out that, and this is just like really, tra this whole thing has about, been about heartbreak. Like I, I skipped a couple pages. There was a whole p a couple pages where everyone admitted that this planet was only free for one week. That everyone was so corrupted um, and going for the short money, the short goal, that there was no hope for actual freedom for this uh, world. So then uh, he negotiates to get a, a videotape of the murder, and it turns out that Ragold had killed himself. He was he he served the planet up to the Empire, used their trust in me. I murdered them all, and soon I will be revealed. Well, you're going to get revealed a lot quicker if you admit to your plan it's in front of a random security camera. Um, so then uh, he kills himself, and then you see this, this is this really dark moment for this you know young man. What is Luke supposed to be? Twenty two or so. And he says, uh, it makes sense. He was the traitor. And in the end, he couldn't handle the consequences of what he'd set up. Regold was killed by the same thing that killed Mary, the war, and himself. He walked the same tightrope we all do, getting tempted from all sides. Like me, I've forgotten my purpose, the right point of view. Forget illusions, Luke. There's too much reality out there. Um, so... Uh, I don't know if I'd call it so much of a dark uh, moment as a growing up moment for Luke, but if you wonder why I hold everyone to such a high standard, it's because this is the level of writing that was on a fill-in issue of Star Wars that looks to be hastily drawn. And this, these, this is what women write like. But girls whether they be 20 or 40 have hidden these talented women because it goes against their myth they they they, they busted the the gates and they stormed no 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 you got hired by thirsty white knights you got hired by virtue signals you didn't do what Anne Nascenti did you didn't spend years and years grinding and taking any filling gig you could get to get your first real series on a good character seven eight years into your career you, you never paid the price so that's why nothing has any worth to you um okay so that's the modern uh, yeah some uh, the, 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 the title of the video is going to be something about not paying the price so anyway thanks for watching subscribe make sure you're still subscribed hit the bell for notifications thanks everyone give them to gofundme and the indiegogo let's see if it's clicked up in the couple minutes since i started this Yeah, nice. Uh, so we're just about to hit uh, 2,200 backers. Very excited. And again, this is only six days in. So um, uh, we should be unlocking Ethan Van Skyver cover in the next few days. And then also, probably the other thing is that I hired a guy to do a illustrated summary to get you caught up on earlier parts of the God of King storyline. This is the culmination of it. So that art is just fantastic. So I'm very excited to sh share that with you. with you. Thanks for watching. I'm probably going to have another late night video because that th this is my promotional uh plan thanks for watching